Hello, everyone, and welcome to session two of Getting Started with Book Creator. I'm very excited to be here with you all. I know some of you were with us last week when we kicked off our Getting Started with Book Creator um, session. My name is Monica Burns. I am a founder of ClassTechTips.com and a book creator ambassador. So happy to be back with you um, this week um, for our session number two. If you weren't with us last week um, or you're watching this on video, um, there's also the first session um, hosted on YouTube. I think just this past week we had over 180 views of it. Um, so definitely some people checking that out and, and reviewing some of the content and just so you know uh, that it's all there um, for you as well. So I'm going to bring us back out here and I put a um, quick question in here um, in the chat area. So you might want to check that out and we'll revisit it um, in just a moment, but keep your eye there. Remember you are in um, listen only mode. So that means you'll be able to hear me. If you have any questions, um, you can go ahead and type them into the question box. There's going to be a handful of times that we're starting um, that we're going through today and, and I'll um, pause and, and review any questions that you have. So that's the place to put it. Um, and um, that's where you can put in anything that you have uh, going on um, as we dive in. So before we jump into our um, session two, I want to send out a few poll questions um, to um, those who are with us live today. So if you um, should see your screen um, changing over um, just about now, as I launch this poll. Have you used Book Creator this week? Uh, one of our goals um, for our first session was for you to try out um, some different things, um, whether you used it yourself, you use it with your students, or you're carving out some time this week um, to really get to it. So I see that about 64% of us have um, voted. Um, about a little more than half use it with students this week, so that's great. Um, and about 30% of you used it just yourself, and we see there's a few of you who are getting ready to carve out some time this week to um, to get into Book Creator. Um, a next question, and this is a real one that we're going to uh, focus on today. How often do you use graphic organizers with students? Um, so this could be in any subject area with or without technology. Um, how often are you using graphic organizers? One of our focus um, points for session two. So about half of us use it sometime, 40% regularly. So a good amount of folks using graphic organizers. And then our last one is how familiar are you with Keynote on the iPad? I'm using Keynote for my presentation on my Mac computer right now, um, but how familiar are you with it on the iPad? So wow, we have a split right now between I'm a pro and I've used it a few times. A few folks, it's um, new to you. Well, we're going to be using, and I'll be um, demoing um, how to use Keynote today to create templates. So you probably have Keynote already on your iPad, whether you are an active Keynote user um, or not. Um, you can always go to your iPad and, and swipe down and search at the top. Um, newer iPads come loaded with Keynote for free, um, that free um, getting started pack, um, where older devices you may have had to purchase Keynote in the past. Um, so that is one we're going to ask you to play around with today. So if you have it, um, wonderful. Um, and you may want to uh, get any wheels spinning if you do need if you do need to download. So let's jump right back in. Um, to our getting started session. Last week was session one, where we did an overview of Book Creator with project ideas and applications. We're still going to um, look at some project ideas today in session two, where we're going to focus on supporting students with graphic organizers and templates. So that's our focus for today. How can we take our Book Creator projects to the next level by supporting students throughout the process um, with graphic organizers, um, by using templates, and we'll look at some examples of ways that teachers have used graphic organizers and templates today. And I'll take you through some examples of um, 
getting started with making templates in um, Keynote. There's a few different ways you could make templates, um, but we'll look at the Keynote um, way today. And then next week, next Wednesday, when we're all together for session three again, um, we'll be talking about collaborating with peers and sharing with authentic audiences. Um, authentic audiences has been such an important topic, um, something I talk a lot about when I, I travel around and, and visit schools. Um, and so it's something we'll focus on um, next week. So we're going to start off today by talking about how important it is to set expectations for students, um, no matter what type of tool that you're using. But when you're diving into a creation tool, a powerful tool like Book Creator, you want to make sure you have clear expectations for your students. So we'll talk about some tips for that today. We'll um, go over the importance of scaffolding, or what I like to call setting up students uh, for success um, with graphic organizers and templates. And so for both the graphic organizers and templates, we'll be looking at different examples and hopefully um, your wheels will start spinning and you'll be thinking about some ways that you could use this tool um, with your students or, or the teachers that you work with supporting them with their students. Um, so remember, Book Creator is an open-ended creation tool. We're using it to create and publish books, and it's a completely customizable experience. So although we're talking about um, scaffolding and supporting students today with graphic organizers and templates, you may have some differentiation in there as well because it does give it your students an opportunity to go their own way, um, tell their own story, demonstrate their understanding. So although we're talking about... Um, some tools that you can use to help students throughout the process. Um, you may have this as a more open-ended experience for students. So, you know, you're the educator in your classroom, you're making that judgment. Um, so we'll talk about some of those, those pieces and, and tips as we move through. So in the question box, a few of you did this already. I'd love for you to share something you explored with Book Creator this past week. Um, so in the questions area, um, go ahead and share something you explored with Book Creator this past week. Maybe you and your students, maybe just you, um, or maybe it's on your to-do list and you want to share that with us. In the question box, go ahead and, um, and answer this, um, this share. So I see that Maureen has shared with us that she's recently used Book Creator to create books about native plants in her region in British Columbia. So that's fantastic. Um, and I love how you mentioned about inserting the audio um, for students to demonstrate what they know. Um, Joe shared that um, they have uploaded videos um, to Google Drive. So sharing that way, which is great. We're going to talk more about um, that next week. Um, Teresa that. I love the, the app smash and the shout out to Telegami, a really fantastic tool you can use for free or you can use um, the paid version. So embedding a Telegami clip. So if you save that clip to your camera roll, we talked last week about adding anything that was shared to the photos of your device and, and putting that in. So that's fantastic. Um, Mackenzie shared that they've explored, um, her students have explored um, third grade memory books um, with Book Creator. So that's wonderful. I uh, see a few more here. Um, Kelly used the Face Story app. Um, so that's a wonderful app smash as well to do a visual story about the Dust Bowl. Love the cross-curricular um, connection and, and thinking about the English language arts um, component. I also see here um, that Marie had students um, draw pictures on Doodle Buddy and upload them in. So another really wonderful um, app smash. Well, I'll share a trick with you um, today for that pen or illustration tool. But of course, if you have kids creating art off the device, they can snap that picture and add it to the screen um, or they can import it if they've done it on another app. So really, really great stuff there. So let's jump in um, to our setting the stage for today by thinking about how you are setting expectations for students. Um, and so when you are working with students, you want to make sure they are creating with a purpose. And that could be really specific, and, and that goes along with some of the graphic organizers and, and templates that we'll look at today. Or it could be more of an open-ended um, 
open-ended purpose. Um, you want to make sure students understand what their final product is going to look like. So maybe this is just a quick share of some products that other students have created or a page you've made. And this is where I really encourage teachers to make an exemplar, uh, make something that your students can look at and they can say, Ooh, I can do that. Or I like how my teacher added this component and maybe they can apply the checklist you're going to give them to yours and kind of grade you or, or give you some feedback as you move through. So exemplars are really powerful for students to um, create a vision for what it is they're going to make. Do all of your students need to see um, that that shining star example? Uh, not necessarily, but for some of your students who may need to visualize kind of back step as part of their planning process, um, that can be really, really useful as well. Um, as well as a um, big part of setting your expectations is making sure you're communicating clearly what it is you want students to do um, throughout the process of creation. And so when we talk about templates and graphic organizers, this can be a great way to communicate clearly to students what it is you want them to do. And this could be something that you do because you're looking for them to accomplish a really specific goal. Or if you're feeling a little timid about one-to-one um, -one from a classroom management perspective um, or setting some students off to work in partners, if you just have access to a few devices, this is one way that you can um, you know, really take a little bit of control and, and feel good about sending kids off um, if they are going to need a little bit more hand-holding or guidance. So what I want you to do right now is open up the notes of your iPad. So maybe you're a true notes app person. Maybe you use Evernote um, or you have an explain everything kind of scratch pad that you write on. And I want you to jot down one project idea that you have. And so I've heard a few of them already, right? The memory book, the Dust Bowl story, um, story book. So jot down a project idea that you have for students. Maybe it's something you've already done or are going to do. And then I want you to think and jot down as well, what would you want to see in your student's final product? So maybe for that Dust Bowl that Kelly gave that example of, you know, you want to see your students using domain-specific vocabulary or connecting to the setting. So go ahead and jot down one project idea you have and what you'd want to see in your student's final project or final product and creation. So take another minute to jot down your uh, project idea and what you'd want to see in that final student creation. If you want to type that into the, the question box and share, you're more than welcome to. If you want to take another minute to jot down some of your, your expectations, but you'd want to see in your student's final product, you can go ahead and do that um, just for yourself as well. All right, so I'm going to ask you to keep this project idea in mind. Um, I'm going to ask you to think about those expectations that what you would want to see in your student's um, final product as we move um, through um, this evening together. And so when we come back to that term scaffolding um, and we're thinking about how we can connect that to any expectations that you've set, so what it is you want students to be able to demonstrate at the end of a particular project, you want to make sure that you're supporting students through the process at all parts of the process. You want to identify the steps in the creation process. So thinking to yourself, what will students need to be able to to do in order to be successful? Will they have to accomplish certain steps along the way in order to create that final piece? 
And so once you have that in mind, you'll really want to anticipate needs in your classroom. Are there certain students who will need more support in one area, who will need help with research, who will need help with layout, who will need help with typing or recording their voice? And you can adjust this during the process of creation also based on your observations. So you're thinking to yourself, what type of activity am I going to have students do? What do I want that final product to look like? So you're identifying your steps in that creation process. And this is an opportunity for you to then anticipate who's going to need what help and support and adjust that based on observations. So as we move through thinking about graphic organizers and templates, you might decide that some students may need a certain level of scaffolding that's different than their peers, so something that feels a little more differentiated. Um, and that's something to keep in mind as we think about planning out and preparing for a, a project or activity students are going to, to work on, whether that's collaborative or independently. So we're going to start off by thinking about some graphic organizers that can support students throughout this process. You could use uh, graphic organizers that are tech friendly. You might have your favorite mind mapping app uh, that you like to use. Um, you might have students on paper and pencil doing some planning like some of the examples I'll share. And you may decide that your graphic organizers come in during different parts of the planning process. Um, this might be something where you are introducing something for students to brainstorm and collect some ideas. You might have them um, planning and picking out the images or going around and snapping pictures and having a graphic organizer where they're um, writing down the captions, making a plan for each page. Um, so this could come in various stages of the writing process. And using graphic organizers is really great if you have no tech or low tech days. And what I mean by that is you might have some times where you do not have access to the iPads you need to use Book Creator. You only have access on Thursdays, or this is the other third grade teacher's week, or it's your turn to grab the seventh grade iPad cart. So when you don't have your device all the time, graphic organizers are a great way to set up students for success when they are going off and using a, um, and getting ready to use the device, you can prepare and make best use of that time by having some planning first. So students might figure out what text goes on each page, sketch a layout, snap some pictures beforehand, and now they're ready to go um, when it is a day that they have access to the tool. So here's an example. on. Just like last week, um, you'll see the title at the top to a special blog post that is on Book Creator's website, and I put the bit.ly down at the bottom. So I'll leave this long enough. I'll leave this up long enough for you to um, stop and jot that bit.ly if you want, or of course you can take a screenshot and just save this slide if you want to go back and check this out. So there's a wonderful story on um, digital interactive notebooks with Book Creator um, featured on the book creator blog and this is one of my favorite graphic organizers um, to use with book creator um, created by a fantastic teacher who's working with her students to really set them up for success for their time creating with Book Creator. And so this is for a Coyote Research Project. And you'll see that this graphic organizer is something that students might use throughout the process or towards the end of the process to um, make sure that they have all the components that they are expected to include. So these are the three things I expect on your cover. In page two and three, I want to see your topic sentence, your detail, your elaboration, your image or picture, all of the things that you would be showing your students how to do, they now have this checklist to help set them up for success. You'll notice on the right hand side, um, these are some of the features that the teacher is looking for students to include. And I love the bonus at the bottom, right? Include that selfie on your All About Author page. So you can check out this story um, straight from the Red, uh, from Red Jumper, from Book Creator's website um, on their blog, and you'll, you'll see it right there. Here's another great example, again, with that bit.ly down at the bottom, if you want to click and read about the story that I'm just paraphrasing for you quickly as we move through um, this evening. So creating and publishing a collaborative book, ebook, 
whatever the assignment um, might be, whatever the task that you've shared with your students, right? Helping them throughout the process, make sure, do I have that image citation? Um, have I included um, headings on pages, right? This might be a peer check. Um, do I have the the word I need in my glossary um, and so on and so forth. So all things to think about when you're kind of stepping back and saying, this is what I want my end product to look like. And here is how I'm going to set up my students for success by creating some graphic organizers that maybe you use all the time with Book Creator, but more likely than not are really specific to the particular task, that assignment, that persuasive book this ABC book, this how-to guide um, that you've set up for students. So I want you to try right now um, opening up your notes app again on your iPad, or maybe you have a digital sketchnoting app um, or just a piece of paper next to you. So jot down or sketch out an idea that you have for a graphic organizer um, that you could use with that project I asked you to kind of keep in the back of your head tonight. Um, so jot down or sketch an idea. What are some of the things you'd want to include on a graphic organizer um, to set your students up for success for the project that you have in mind. If you have any questions, this is also a great time to plug them into our question box. So if there's certain things that you know you might be looking for for a particular website, um, you know, for particular, sorry, I'm, I'm reading our, our answers and um, our, our questions here and, and talking at the same time. So if there's a particular thing you're looking for in your graphic organizer, um, you can go ahead and jot that down for yourself or share it here. Um, I saw Maureen was talking about a website, uh, Photos for Class, which is a great one for finding images that have citations um, that you can just build right in there to the bottom. It's a kid-friendly search engine. So um, I think Maureen, including something like that, looking for that image citation on your graphic organizer or checklist would be a great thing to add for students. If you have any other components or things you would want to make sure your students are including, you can jot that down or sketch it out on your own graphic organizer. We'll take another um, minute or so for that. And of course, you can um, put any of your your comments or your questions in the in the question box there for us. All right, we're going to jump back in and talk a little bit about templates, which really connects to um, what we're going to, um, what we're thinking about with setting expectations for students. And if you have any other graphic organizer ideas you want to put into our question box, you can go ahead and do that um, as we're talking here. But we're going to take some time today to think through how you can incorporate templates into your um, work. And this is when you might want to have your, your kind of keynote out and ready because um, we'll be playing around and, and kind of do as I do um, as we move through this as well. So templates are really useful and you may have used templates before in, in different types of projects with students similar to this idea of a graphic organizer where you're anticipating certain needs, you're setting up students for success, it might be something that you use as outlines for pages, a quick fill in the blank. I'll show some examples of both. It might be something that you set up when you're doing collaborative products and you want everyone's page to have the same kind of look or feel because you're gonna put them all together at the end. And it also becomes really this instant checklist. So you can have students say, all right, I've done all these things. Um, I filled in all the boxes on my page um, and I'm good to go. So it, it can cover a lot of ground. And it also might be something that you might just say, you know, this is going to, you know, I can send someone off and they can work independently because I've kind of helped them, push them in the right direction, given them some guidance for what each page is, is going to have or is going to say.
So just like the two examples I shared before, this bit.ly is down at the bottom so that you can find the story on Book Creator's website. And so this is a story about, um, or this is a blog post, I sh should say, sharing uh, digital interactive notebooks with Book Creator. And what you see here is a template. This is a page, and we're going to play around with this um, with some keynote design shortly. And so here you have some different areas. And now students can take this page, they can have it as the background, or this image as the background of their page, and they can annotate. So they can write on top of it, they can add text on top of it, they can put a picture in it, and they're able to, in this case, show evidence of their work at different stations. So maybe they're snapping a picture while they're in rhyme time station and putting that in the box. Maybe they're jotting down on um, one word they heard during listening center and putting that in the box. So some different options, and of course, those are things that you would kind of set students up for with what the expectation is as well, and this would just help them really organize their thinking and, and have that all there um, as well. So another example, and this is um, another that you can find on Book Creator's website, is to create template books um, with Book Creator. And so having um, these different pieces in the background so that students can then take a book that they've created, um, that you've created in Book Creator, they can open up that book in their device and they can add in and, and modify the different features. So this is a different, um, a different route than we're gonna look at today, but it's definitely one to think about. You can set up the entire book in Book Creator, share it with students, they can open it in their own Book Creator, and then they are able to modify the different um, pieces, um, whether that's putting in a title, adding captions to the diagram. So it really just depends on what you're looking to accomplish with your students, and this is just one way um, that you can do it as well. So what we're going to look at today is um, how you can do this with Keynote. And you'll see an example here, another bit.ly down at the bottom, that's similar to what we're going to do together. So you can, um, in this example, see that this is a creating vocabulary notebooks um, with a purpose. And so here there is a background this image, just like the image we're going to create together shortly. And then the student opens this image in their book creator and they can decide, am I going to write on the screen? Am I going to type in the answer? Am I going to snap or import a picture or video? Right, They're filling in um, this piece. And so this is the kind of template that we're going to take a look at together um, today. And again, if you have questions as we're moving through these pieces, please don't hesitate to jot them down in that question box and we'll pause at different places um, and I'll encourage you to have Keynote nearby because that's something that we're going to um, have some time to play with after I do the demo here. So here I am in Keynote. Again, Keynote is on the iPad. It's an iOS app. Um, most of you probably have Keynote ready to go on your iPad. As I mentioned earlier, it's free for those of us with a, a more contemporary iPad. Um, otherwise, you can download it from the the Apple App Store. And so if you look in the upper right hand corner, um, you can press that plus sign and you'll create a new presentation. So you'll see right there at the top, create a presentation. And that's what we're going to do today. So when you are given the options, I usually stick with a standard theme and I'll, I'll show you how that lines up well um, to when we import this into Book Creator. You can choose anything here. We're going to just work off that blank white slide that you see um, in the upper left hand, um, that top row right there. And so here is my presentation slide. Um, I can tap and add text, and I'll go through a, a few different features here um, as we move through as well. So down there at the bottom, um, and again, these are screenshots just for the to help us out with some lag time. So down there at the bottom, you've seen I created a text box with name and date. So this is something that I want students to take this slide, have it as the background for their first page, and make sure that their name and their date goes on that page as well. So I've decided to get rid of that other text box and go up to the top of my screen so I can add a shape. And there's a couple different options of things you can add in Keynote, but we're gonna stick with some shape backgrounds today. And so I've added a green and a purple. Um, nice big at the top, 
smaller at the bottom. And you might have um, you know, a setup routine for students. You might have kind of a cheat sheet or something on the board that helps them remember what goes in in what spot and, and all of that. And so you can tap the bottom of the slide at the um, bottom of the screen, that little plus sign to add a new slide anytime you want to keep going. So we're going to add another blank slide here. And then I have the opportunity with that plus sign to add some text with the paintbrush to make that um, specific to different fonts and sizes, you name it. Um, and I can also go back and add just about anything else that I'm looking for um, as well. And so here I've added another one of these purple boxes. Um, and again, you can say to students, this is what goes in the purple box. This is what goes here or there. Um, you might even have instructions that you leave on the page, or that might be something you just announce to students or have projected on the board um, as they're working through um, a project as well. So I've also created another box right here. Um, Keynote lets me create just the border box uh, so that it is layered on top of the white space. Um, when you come up here to the top, you'll see it gives me a few different options um, for sharing and, and opening this in another app. Um, when I come out here, I'm just going to um, toggle that down and move here as well. Um, there we go. Um, so as I toggle that one down, you'll see that the best way to do this, in my opinion, I'm, I'm just kind of coming out here so that you see my mouse moving around the screen, is if you hit this plus on the triangle up here, so our plus sign is going to add different things, our paintbrush is going to help us customize, um, we can use our share button if we want to get this off of, out of Keynote, but for us today, we're gonna to stick with this plus sign because what this is going to do is this is going to turn this into a full screen mode. Um, and so I want you to see it here as opposed to my full screen um, so it's clear for us. So when you pull these up in full screen mode, this is when I suggest taking a screenshot because it will save automatically to your photo. So take, playing this as a slideshow, taking a screenshot, playing this as a slideshow, taking a screenshot. And then when you go back out um, to your device, um, it'll be ready and waiting for you in the photo section as your most recent pictures. Um, and so you can then decide, of course, what the workflow is gonna look like for your students. You might have these um, readily available for them to download, um, say from a Dropbox folder. You might have sent these out for students and they save them on their device couple different options that might make more sense or less sense depending on what type of tools you you use for workflow but now we're going to come back out and I'm going to bring us full screen again um, to take a look at um, at book creator there um, and see how we can go about the steps of, of adding these as well so I'm back here full screen looking at my book creator which is my app right there in the middle and now I've opened up book creator to start a new book and I'm gonna stick with landscape here and, and you'll see why we we stuck with our um, standard slide deck as opposed to the wide slide deck but we're sticking with landscape here and it fills up my whole screen. And now, last week we talked about that plus sign in Book Creator that linked to adding all sorts of content. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to press the plus sign and go to the photos um, part of my device. And if you go down to your moments, your camera roll most recent, or just jump into that screenshots folder, you'll see that the last images um, are of those full screen. And I can tap on it and add it in here as well. I'm just gonna come out for a second. It looks like we might be a little frozen on here. Oop, there we go. I'm just give that a, a nice uh, a nice extra uh, tap and we'll stay in this view. And so this picture, right, it's just a picture that I've imported just like we imported those pictures from the Bronx Zoo last week. Um, I can keep it automatically, make sure it fits corner to corner on my whole side of the page. And so now look what you can do. I'm gonna go back to my plus sign and this is where students can take this template, everyone has the same one, and they can make it their own. They can add their content and layer it on top. So when we go to that plus sign, they can go ahead and add text. So remember that my trip to the Bronx Zoo. And now when they are done, 
they are adding that text on top of the title box. So you might have said to students, all of your titles go in that green box. You can make it whatever color you want, any font you want, fill that green box with your um, title. Then they can go back to their plus sign and they can add a picture. And so this might come straight from that Bronx Zoo folder, um, right, where they're adding some pictures. They choose the picture that they want, and then they can fill it up in that purple box, right? So maybe that's where I've said to students, this is going to be your picture box. And so the final thing that you may want them to do, and they could do this by adding text, but we already saw that up at the top of the screen. So let's try out the pen tool. You might have them write their name on that space for um, where they're filling in their name, but you might say, it's hard for me to squeeze in and fit you know, my whole name or the whole date there. You can also write it across the entire screen, and then when you come out, you can squeeze, you know, scrunch it down, squeeze it so it's smaller, and move it right into the space. So I'll show you that one more time. When you're in the pen tool, you can write nice and big, but then you can squeeze it and fit it into the space right there. Um, so it's a nice way to incorporate both the text tool, the photo tool, and the pen tool to layer this content um, on one another. So I see a few questions have popped up and I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at them. But I want you to take a few minutes now, we'll, we'll carve out about, about three or four minutes right now, for you to open up Keynote or a similar tool, maybe it's a sketch noting type of tool, um, and go ahead and create a slide that you could use as a template. And this is a great time for you to play with that and um, put some questions into the question box as well. So this is your chance to have your keynote open to play around with it, um, but also put any questions that you have or wonderings um, or your own stories right into that question box. Oh, Marie um, asks a great question. Um, would you suggest locking the template in Book Creator um, for students? So you can um, you can do that, right? Keep that image all in one place. Um, it just depends. Um, if you have students who are, are pretty familiar with the tool, they might not um, come up with any type of, of hitting any wall. If they move that over, they can just move it right back. So um, really up to you. It may be something that you suggest to students, or you might say, you know, that's more of a, a problem solving. I'm going to share with my, my students who are my expert app students who kind of help desk and go around um, while kids are working. Um, so really up to you. And I love Mackenzie's um, you know, sharing here about loving the app smashing with Keynote since it's not an app that you use too often since you're a, you're a Google Apps for Education school. And yeah, I, there's a lot of ways that you can create templates. Um, that Volcano example, you can check out um, on the Book Creator blog. And that's one that um, works out really well um, if you set up that book ahead of time and then distribute it to students. Um, but I like this as well for just creating that image, importing the image, something students um, should be able to to get on board with pretty fast so go ahead and if you're not in keynote already or you're just opening that up go ahead and put um, your one template together just like our title page template I made for um, for our book creator trip to the Bronx Zoo creation All right, so we have just about five minutes left together um, this evening. So what I'd like you to do if you have any questions or you have a goal that you're setting yourself for next week 
Or if you are thinking of ways that you can incorporate either graphic organizers or um, templates, I know our attendee mics are off, but I'd love to give you a moment to type in some of those things that are, are coming to mind so I can give you that shout out, but then also share with the whole group so they can they can gather some ideas as well. So if you are got your wheels spinning about graphic organizers or templates and you have an idea of how you might use that um, in your classroom or suggest teachers that you work with to use it, go ahead and, and type that in. In, um, to our questions box. So I see Maureen is right here. Um, she said she loves the idea of creating a template in Keynote and then taking a screenshot and adding those into Book Creator. And yeah, the, the text tool with the, the deep the decreasing size and the, and the sh being able to shrink. Um, that's something I love, Maureen. It's just so great for students who, you know, you know how it is when you're working with children on devices. Some kids get frustrated a little bit easier than others. Um, and you may be able to anticipate that when we talked about scaffolding and, and setting up everyone for success. So you might want to pull a couple kids aside and say, you know, when we're using templates today, you know, you can write as big as you want, you can type as big as you want, and then you can shrink it or, or decrease the size, um, pinch it so it gets a little bit smaller and move it into the right place. So it takes some of the pressure off as well. Okay, great. Um, so I know Mackenzie um, was asking about the locking the images, but you said you got it. Thumbs up. Great. Um, very good. So what I want to do as we wrap up today, and you can please keep sharing these, um, keep sharing these stories and, and these pieces into our, our question box, and I'll continue to shout it out as we wrap up. Um, your goal for next time is we're off this week from a book creator chat on Twitter. You can go ahead and check out that schedule on book creators blog, but I'm encouraging you to create a template or a graphic organizer um, when you are working with students or you might be out of school already here in New York where uh, we're still in session but you might be out of school already so you're just kind of planning for next year create a template maybe it's just the first page maybe it's just an about the author page and you're giving kids flexibility for the rest of the space or create that graphic organizer, just like our awesome um, Coyote uh, example um, with the uh, nonfiction text features. Go ahead and make something that you can distribute to maybe all the students in your class, maybe some of the children in your class, um, just to really set them up for success. So next week when we come together, we're going to talk about creating for um creating and collaborating. So thinking about how to share work um, that students have made with an audience, um, as well as getting kids creating and collaborating in both shared screen um, and one-to-one -one, um, environments. So thank you so much for joining us um, for this session two of Getting Started with Book Creator. I'll stay on for just a few more minutes in case you have any other questions or something you just want to share or shout out. Um, and thank you so much for joining us um, this evening. Thanks for your message, Maureen. I'm glad that you were able to join us and thank you for joining us today.